Welcome to another broadcast of The Soul of the Everyman on the Artist First Radio Network. All past broadcasts are available in podcast form. You can pick them up at artistfirst.com. Want to send a question or comment? Hit us up at DJ at artistfirst.com. And we are very thankful this Thanksgiving season to have in our radio network the wise ones, Michael and Margaret Lines. <laughs> a couple of turkeys. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Scott. <laughs> Uh, and yes, and we are very thankful to be here, and I am the non-wise one, Michael. Oh. And I'm Margaret. The wise one. No. <laughs> oh, please, no. Well, I'm thankful she's here. Oh, I'm thankful you're here as well. Yeah, but otherwise you guys have to listen to like an hour of ranting. <laughs> you know. And you, should, you all should be thankful that she's here, uh, because uh, well, I, I, we could start the rant right off with that. I mean, we are thankful that Thanksgiving only comes once a year. I'm thankful Thanksgiving only comes once a year. I'm not that big of a turkey fan, and you know, I think all of us, you know, have um, we're very glad to be related to the people that we only see once or twice a year. <laughs> I mean, and that's not true. I mean, we we uh, we we love getting together with our family. We actually see them more than twice a year, it's like three times, and um, <laughs> and and their 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 love day are all. Uh, we definitely have a family of unique individuals, mm. and, I, and I do that means mean that sincerely. I mean, we're all just a little bit. Um, you know, four or five degrees off the center in various directions. And we do have a good time when we all get together. And that's your family and my family and all the extended family and the, the kids and the grandkids and everybody else. We, we, we do enjoy them. We really do. But I think um, the theme of tonight's show, I really didn't explain it. The theme of tonight's show is that, um, you know, we all at some level hate Thanksgiving. And, and I'll turn it around. We actually hate kind of giving thanks. And I think there's a couple of different um, of aspects to it. One of the things that people don't like to do about giving thanks is it kind of feels like a humble brag. It's like, well, look at all the things I have to be thankful for. And so there's this sort of resistance to kind of enumerating them. And then I think the other part of, of you know, uh, being thankful or giving thanks that people find a, a problem with, so they kind of think, well, maybe, maybe if I'm, you know, too um, vocal about what I have to be thankful for, that it'll all kind of disappear. <laughs> you know, it'll all, oh. it, you know, it's like, you're, like you're, you're saying, well, I'm thankful for this, and then poof, it's gone, you know, and, and I think there's a, a little bit of, of that, and then there's just an overall kind of overarching, you know, holiday uh, stress, and I think, this year, maybe it's maybe we're just getting older. I don't know, but I think this year they are marching to Christmas. So I mean, they were putting out Christmas decorations stuck inside mm -hmm. pumpkin. You know, <laughs> <laughs> happy merry Halloween. You know, it's like oh my goodness, uh, and and um and and the stores rush to it. You know, from the very beginning, you almost have uh, you know it, it, they start you with Christmas in July. It's like yeah yeah. You know, and and it just sort of takes all the stuffing out of the out of the out of us, you know, and 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 all of the kind of joy out of the holiday because it seems this endless, you know, Stalin-esque march to the, you know, we're jingle marching bells. through. Yes, you know, jingle bells as we march through, you know, <laughs> uh, the steps of Russia on our way to Stalingrad. It's like, oh my God, you know, it's just we've just had enough. Uh, you know, here we are. It's literally a couple of days before Thanksgiving, and you're like, "I'm done with Christmas already. I, I don't want to. I don't want to hear any more about it." And it hasn't even started yet. Uh, so, uh, well, there's, uh, it's, it's a, lot, a lot of stress. It's already <laughs> started. No, but it has. But no, but what I mean is that usually when you it, you hear the Christmas music, it, you it's supposed to help put you in the mindset of thinking of. Who gets what? What have I thought of to give to somebody else? It's like all this suddenly. Well, what am I doing? Kind of thing, and that is an almost an automatic. 
turn on switch when you hear Christmas music. Oh no, I need to make up a list to figure out to make sure I'm not missing anybody. Yeah, you know that's stress. Yeah, and and they started with the Christmas music early November, late August. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed, and you know, I honestly think you can only take about a month of all that, and then you just want to flush the entire thing down think, the tubes. I think it's even less. I mean, it's just, I, uh, you know. I won't say that this is always true, but that we have this idea in our heads that Christmas is something that starts about, oh, I don't know, December 17th or 18th or something like that, and it goes for a week and a half. Uh, and that would, be, that would be fine by me. Um, yes, of course, you know, there's some time ahead of every holiday where you have to prepare and get ready to receive people and get them things, especially Christmas is about you know, gift giving and remembering people. And, but it's just become this... Uh, almost, um, you know, this this ordeal. It's become it's become a a gamut that you have to run, uh, and literally in in the sense of a, of a true, you know, um, the Native Americans had a, a a trial where a young warrior would have to run through rows of other older warriors being struck by clubs. Well, that's what it feels like <laughs> on, the way to, on the way to Christmas. So you, you have to be you're running through a Walmart. Uh, dodging uh, candy canes as they're swung at you by by homicidal elves. It's just and and here, but it's and here it is. It's, it, I, I, it's just it's only Thanksgiving, you know. Now, but the idea, the the whole idea that Thanksgiving, you know, we, we are supposed to just be thankful to be able to come together, and it's a wonderful thing. But it's always had this back pressure of Christmas. That's how it always felt. But this year, it has really, it just, they've decided, because it was almost this invisible boundary line that, okay, no, no, Black Friday is when you began to do all that. Right. But no. 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 This is now, and I, I'm, I'm wondering about that, actually. I'm, I'm thinking it's because the bricks and mortar stores are having an awful hard time versus the online. So they're pushing for you to come in. I think it's all... Uh, you're right. I mean, I think there's tremendous... Um, let's back up a little bit because we kind of started with the rant. I, I, you know, it's me. I started with the rant. But if we, if we kind of back up a little bit, and your point is exactly well taken, is that there's a, there's a huge commercial machine which is pushing us towards this giant buying orgy, which is what they've made Christmas into. And, and you know, for all they decry the, the, the origins of the holiday, which is a Christian holiday, it celebrates the birth of Jesus, um, you know, they, they need Christmas like, it's their, like the, it's their savior, because that's, you know, when we were in retail, um, uh, Black Friday had nothing to do with the color of black. It really had to do with whether you were in the black. You know, when, when you have a ledger uh, in accounting, you have uh, columns of numbers, and the columns of numbers that were red are the ones where you're losing money, okay? And the columns of numbers that were black are the ones where you're making money. Well, when you, you, Black Friday was when you finally, if you were a retailer, made it into the black. And, and I'll confess, you know, when we spent 10 years selling rocks in a rock and gem sh store and and the christmas season was when we would actually make uh, you know a couple of shekels that we could rub together and and call it a year now it wasn't that way every year but the years that, that it worked it worked very nicely and and you can have some sympathy of course for folks in, uh, who are in their own shops or or even larger chains where they they have to make their money during this fairly compressed period of time then there's the point that you just made is that there's there's tremendous other things that are happening in the world we're we're in one of these transition periods maybe we've been in one for the last dozen years or so but it's maybe coming to a crescendo because that's what it feels like right mm -hmm. is that we've reached some sort of a of a of an inflection point in christmas and now it's it's now it's christmas with with you know with neutrons and and nuclear bombs we are we are doing christmas at at warp 9 because because 
everybody is fighting for those uh, to be in the black, you know, to to get those dollars in their coffers, and to survive, and to survive. But but I think we in this, you know, we being the the consumer are in the middle, just getting. We are the collateral damage of this incredible economic, uh, you know, conflict, uh, because we're getting swept off our feet by these waves of Christmas that have been starting literally since September fourteenth. You know, uh, wow. it, it it's. It hasn't been this gentle, oh, we're coming to the end of the year, we're going to see our families and get together and have a little meal and be thankful and celebrate Yuletide. And, and no, 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 no. The guns, you know, they, they, they drew up their, their battle lines and they started firing and they've been shelling us since since the, the end of the summer that Christmas was coming and Thanksgiving is also uh, it's now just a crater uh, it's a speed bump on the way to christmas Bare- <laughs> barely a speed bump you run over a, a you crush a pumpkin and 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 and, and, get and your s- smush a turkey on your way to to you know setting a christmas tree on fire <laughs> with the, the gifts <laughs> underneath it i mean it's just it's just it's terrible and 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 i think uh, our peace of mind is collateral damage, and I think our our relationships with our 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 people, our our families, are somewhat of collateral damage. Because all this stress comes out when you <clears throat> see these people that you've been slaving over trying to figure out what gift to get them. <laughs> like, <"Arr." laughs> hate hate you. <laughs> what do you want for Christmas, G D it? <laughs> I ate your turkey too. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> it's 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 bad because it gets us all freaked out and on edge uh, when we should be uh, thinking about our relationships and seeing people we haven't seen in a while and and getting together for a meal and then celebrating the end of of the year and. We don't do any of those things, or it's very. It becomes much more difficult to do them <clears throat> without all the, you know, without all the stress that is associated with them. Well, if you flip it, let's say, okay, we can't control the people who are blaring the Christmas music over the the speakers. Okay, I mean, you're hit with it continually now because mm. everybody said, okay, it's Thanksgiving week, let her rip. <laughs> Let <her rip>. <laughs> <laughs> <Push> the red <laughs> <laughs> Because it's been, I know, uh, some of the stores, we've been getting Christmas music the week before the week of Thanksgiving. But if you flip it, and you're going to have to con- consciously decide that you, this is, no, no, no. I'm not, I'm not playing. And especially if you've, if you've got children because they're easily led along, hmm. especially if you're in a in a shopping environment, because everything's pretty and shiny and blinky. Hmm. Um, but uh, things like okay, teaching that a gift is does not have to be the most expensive thing on the shelf. You know, what is it? You, would you what is your Christmas list what would you like and not stressing uh, again the the things that are mega bucks mm-hmm. but what is it that you'd really what could you use what would you like to play with what would you like to explore and then having them see each other's Christmas lists and actually making stuff because kids, you know, they like their hands-on. They love to do hands-on. But it takes uh, a lot of effort to bring that along. Now, as an adult, just opening the conversation up with other members of your family, it's like, you, what, what are you guys thinking of? You know, is it... And to use that as a... a foundation of conversations like okay you know I really would like to help you what what's going you're right I mean 
it, actually, I think it, the abstraction there is that um, if you focus, first of all, I'll take your first point, you focus on the children because all this stuff that we just talked about is the stuff they assault us with. They try to get to the kids too, through us and through their programs, but let's just say that there still is in a child's mind and a child's heart this wonderful association with Christmas. And if you if you see it through their eyes, you know, you see the decorations and the special time of year and, and the, the celebrations and the things we do that we don't do at any other time of the year, and they get excited and they get... Um, they, they anticipate the whole thing, and they and they exactly they they see all the shinies and the blinkies, and they see the Christmas lights, and and they're not uh, jaded or stressed by it, or they shouldn't be. And then you focus, you flip it, and turn turn it around. And say this is for them more than for anybody else. But you, but it is a a it is a um, it is a sustained effort to to keep that focus in mind because there's an there's a sustained assault right. on the other side trying to make you crazy mm-hmm. and so there's you know you have to kind of enter into the holiday season with a kind of you know, it, it isn't quite the same but you tie on that red bandana you know one with one with the jingle bells on it that says i'm going to hold the line for the kids you know for the for my kids or my grandkids so that they understand you know, some of the true um, peace and some of the true um, core values and principles that are that make a special time of year, like, for argument's sake, let's say right now, Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Um, it, instead of it being a speed bump on the way to Christmas, basically, you know, gluttony and football, um, that, that, you know, you, that you try to um, involve them in the get-together you know, as a as something that we say, well, we're gonna we're going to do um, a, a big gathering of all the people that we love, or many of the people that we love, and we're all going to we're going to share the basic human need, which is food, uh, with each other. And you know, what do kids love to do? They love to get in the kitchen and and try to cook or try to help cook, and so that's always a good thing, right? Mm-hmm. No, they love baking. Or, right. or just any, well, especially if they get to eat it. Right. But, you know, and that's that's pretty much <laughs> basic human <laughs> need and response. Right. But it's it's enjoying the time that you have together. It's very precious, and letting them see that you know, especially if you if you as a parent are are present, um, you can share all that and. Even as adults, sharing with another adult, but being completely present. This is why I'm saying the conversations are key. Mm. Because that's what I remember about Thanksgiving, is you get to have deeper conversations with different members of the family that you haven't seen in a while. And, you know, how are things going? I think the stress comes up when um, different family members can't do that can't take an interest in someone else in the family. Yeah, or, or uh, you know, <clears throat> in, in some ways, you know, the separation helps people have relationships. And, and there are, when you bring a, a group of people together who are, uh, who have a, um, who, who have had a evolving relationship over time, you know, mm-hmm. they were, once, for argument's sake, maybe they were parents and children, and now they're quote unquote peers, but there's some tensions there. Or, you know, these, so these, these gatherings, we, we really didn't go into the, but the, the gatherings can be full of, of, of stress. You know, there's this first, anytime you have any sort of gathering of family, um, there's always a, um, oh, you know, I've got to remember what Uncle Fred does or what what Aunt Jean does or remember all their names you know it's like you're trying to figure out all their names and what their kids are doing and so there's all that kind of of re knitting now it's important to do that once in a while so you know what's going on in the family and most and of us go ahead and it's also important to be able to have um, break times in between conversations because you have to just sort of 
come back to yourself and regroup. Because sometimes, you know, you, there's always one member of the family that will talk endlessly uh, and not really engage in the person that they're speaking with. They just, they're going on and on yeah. about whatever, if, whether it's a harangue or they're doing a <laughs> rant or... No, no, none of that, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, but... So there's, but you know, in broad, there's there's these, um, uh, you know, there's a, there's these interpersonal dynamics, some of these things you just mentioned. There's sort of the sort of the overall arching kind of we, you know, almost always when someone's having a, a family get together, there's someone who's someone or some group who are hosting, and so they're doing maybe there's a lot of work and preparation involved. Uh, you generally try to spread that out a little bit, but there's always usually one person who's who's sort of the nexus, and that that could be very stressful. You know, so you say, well, I'm hosting the family for for this huge party. Well, that means I have to do all the work, you know, or or a lot of it maybe. Uh, so that that becomes uh, um, a stressor on on people, and, and even just having, you know, like like we said just just earlier, having to um, you know, reconnect and kind of resync up your lives, especially if you've been separated um, by distance or time or just busyness. Uh, and and there is those conversations, and you have to kind of say, oh yeah, well, you know, I'm going to have to listen to Uncle Fred's, you know, uh, fire plug joke yet again, uh, whatever it is. You know? Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, one thing I am grateful for is the fact that. People aren't showing slides anymore off their vacations. Oh my God! Wouldn't that be a great idea? <laughs> <laughs> we could bring out like a, like a Super Eight movie. <laughs> Just, I mean, that used to be a killer for me when people wanted. Oh, let me show you what we did, and you're just like, I'm trapped. I'm trapped. I can't get away. That's why people drink. Um, but you know, they everyone's got their phones in their pockets. So they're all dragging out their. Well, the phone is is a little different because you can, you know, go back and forth. You have your phone; they have theirs. You can but just, you're armed as well. You're armed, yes. yes there's you there's parody. Oh yeah, yes. you want to show me your pictures? Well, I've got pictures <laughs> for you. Actually, it'll be very interesting to see the interactions at this point because you know that's what it was before. Now it's like okay, well, now we're both armed. Right, right. Before it was unilateral. They had a howitzer. You had nothing. Well, you were in their territory. Right. Like we've got a slide projector and couches. I'm like, ah! But now you do have your own phone, so you can yeah. you, you can fire back at least. <laughs> well, you know, now that I think of it, now that because everyone has their own phone, they can actually disengage whenever they want to. Well, there's another fascinating thing, and we haven't really thought about. It, but you know, um, that's one thing that has become the both I think the savior and the bane of family gatherings is that everyone uh, gets there and says hi 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 and then instantly starts scrolling through their phone and everyone you know there's this moment where, where you're, you're no longer interacting you're you're back in your own world and and maybe it's a respite it, you know you could say well okay I can I cannot be engaged with these people on a on a continual basis even though I'm in their in their yeah presence. even though you know you can't leave the room but, but but it also can kind of lend itself to sort of a disjunct. Um, you know, I like it. I, there are people who have these rules, and they say no phones at the table, you know, or no phones um, well, during certain parts of the day. Parts of, well, when you're, when you're having the meal, yeah. no phones. No phones. You know, or um, and then you can figure out what you need to do later. I mean, now it's perfectly all right to be able to just whip your phone up out and and be engaged with that and it's silence mm. you know it, it you couldn't do that before you had to make small talk <laughs> right i mean like if, at, years ago if you were at a family dinner and you pulled out a book and started reading people looked at you funny uh yeah <laughs> don't yeah. you want to be here now everyone's got their own phone and they're like yeah i'm reading <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah just, just checking facebook you know uh, well, it's just, I mean, the equivalent, equivalent of that would be if you put your, your earbuds in. Then that would be like, okay, now you... Or just earplugs. <laughs> earplugs. Oh, earplugs. my. <laughs> Go ahead, Uncle Fred. Tell me the joke about the fire plug again. 
<laughs> oh, that's really funny. Um, oh my. <laughs> well, I, I mean, you, you know, we've kind of ranged all around, but so so Thanksgiving, um, which we we want to take it out of this realm of of speed bump on the way to to Christmas, and and kind of make sure that we do kind of give it its own, uh, you know. You know, its own kind of entity. It, it always had in the past. I think the Canadians have it have it better off, Margaret, because they have their Thanksgiving Day in October. Um, you know, and, and it's more of a harvest festival. And ours was probably supposed to be too, but this moving it closer and closer and closer to Christmas, whatever you know, we, the the day that we picked, um, has made it. Uh, almost like you said, the starting gun. You know, the the ding, ding, ding. You know, round one of Christmas is starting now that, that Thanksgiving is over. Uh, and if you had had it somewhere along the lines of of I think uh, I think Thanksgiving Day in Canada might even be before Halloween. You know, and you might be. I have no I idea. It's mid I don't know. They either. have Thanksgiving in Canada. They do. Canada's copying us about everything. They have they have a Thanksgiving Day in Canada. Don't you Canadians don't write the because Scott can't even you can't even answer mail from Canada. That's how bad it is. And so, uh, <laughs> so but 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 I think um, the compression of the holidays we we do have to have, make an effort because there is a there is a, a very important gathering that happens around this time of year when you know at, at christmas time you there's a list of people you get gifts for but at thanksgiving you may have many 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 more people that you just see and you just want to talk to and have a have a um you know a, a an engagement a, a meal with um it, it isn't as uh focused as christmas christmas is really focused on gifts and focused on um a certain cadre of people maybe just your grandkids or your kids or something that you're gonna you're going to celebrate it with and although when we were uh when we had our kids it was, christmas was a never-ending marathon of going from one grandparent's house to another to another to another to another yeah but this, what i'm trying to say is that thanksgiving and the idea of just being able to come together because right, I know you you started it off with you know you thought Thanksgiving is is giving thanks is a pain. No, I didn't really mean that. He said insincerely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but to be really truly grateful to be able to be in the room with people who are your family is is really truly amazing. I mean, we know what it's like not to have someone of your family with you. Yeah, I think... And that that void is something you would never wish on anyone. So no matter if people make you crazy, it's like, you know what? You're alive. And I, I appreciate the fact that you're alive. And we're here. And we can have a conversation. Or, or share a meal. I mean that's exactly it. I I think that pulling it back from um, this sort of 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 Christmas precursor and just this kind of thing you have to get through to get to Christmas uh, is right and 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 correct and 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 it needs to be a time to have to give thanks for that for that for the respite for the for the moment to gather um, and it's actually, so it's so precious. It's just so precious. It is, and and uh, while we'll, what we'll do right now, though, is we'll take a precious break. We'll go back to the studio. We will give thanks for this break, and you guys will contemplate Thanksgiving. On the other side, maybe we'll talk a little bit more about um, how to deal with that holiday stress a bit. Rick Rodan fans, love mythology with plenty of action and humor? Destroyer's Blood is for you. The new fantasy novel by award-winning author Michael Lines is book one of the adventures of Dev Kalian, the Blood series. Follow Dev and his magic sword betrayer as they are suddenly attacked and forced to return to Olympus to fight in a war they want no part in. 
The world of men and gods is about to be destroyed by Zeus's ancient foe, and only Dev and Trey can stop him. The conflict never stops, and the amazing twist will have you on the edge of your seat. Act now while the ebook is on sale for only 99 cents. Destroyer's Blood is available on Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, iTunes, Kobo, and fine e-tailers everywhere. And while you're there, get the free prequel, It's In The Blood, available for a limited time. The Timeless Esoterica Radio Program with Dr. Bruce is broadcast on the fourth Monday of every month at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern on ArtistFirst.com. We explore topics including the paranormal, alien life, mysteries, conspiracies, hidden history, oddities, and much more. Each show will feature a special guest with exciting and thought-provoking discussion. Always keep an open mind, an open heart, live forever, and remember Dr. Bruce believes in you. There is a Reaper is the story of five-year-old Christopher Aaron and his life-changing struggle with leukemia. Winner of both the Indie Bragg Medallion as well as the reader's favorite silver medal for memoir, There is a Reaper has more than 100 Amazon book reviews and a five-star rating. It has been described as life-changing, spiritual, a must-read. Just released on Audible and iTunes, this memoir is also available in paperback and on Amazon Kindle for only 99 cents. Get your copy of this life-changing memoir today. Hi, this is Hannah Ruth from the band Wild Hum. Check out our new Americana Soul CD, Wild Hum, at our website, W-I-L-D-H-U-M music.com. And you are listening to the Artist First Radio Network. Thank you. The Fat Man Gets Out of Bed is the latest book from Michael Lines, the award-winning author of There is a Reaper. Featuring 13 original stories, this wide-ranging collection has everything. Forbidden love, gods versus demigods, weird invading aliens, sexy seductive artificial intelligence, and unusual passion between the living and the dead. All set amidst fantastic worlds of pain and loss and boundless joy. From the sublime to the macabre to the bittersweet, The Fat Man Gets Out of Bed will leave you breathless with laughter, brimming with tears, trembling with suspense. Available now on Amazon.com, Google Play, iTunes, Kobo, and fine e-tailers everywhere. You are listening to The Soul of the Everyman on Artist First World Radio. Back to your hosts, Michael and Margaret Lines. Thank you very much, Steve. And, and uh, you know, during the breaks, we have wonderful conversations. And we're, we're talking about our, our, our New Year's show. We may have something special planned for you folks. We're working it out. We're working it out right now. <laughs> uh, but, uh, uh, but, 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 but back to the, to the holiday at hand, because here we are. We're jumping ahead. And um, the holiday at hand... Is, is Thanksgiving and we we you know I, I did start the show with a rant but I'm you know I'm I have low blood sugar and I'm 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 uh, I, I'm, I'm a curmudgeon and I'll have to apologize because I you know it is a it is a time uh, which I I do I I will confess I I always enjoy I I love I love uh, for the last several years uh, I make a turkey um, and this particular bird is um, somewhat special because. I cover it in multiple pounds of bacon. Mm. You can just just imagine that. It's not Canadian bacon either. <laughs> this is USDA New York strip bacon. I don't know what kind of bacon it is. And uh, and we put garlic cloves in the breast of turkey meat. And this is not a cooking show, but this is this this thing comes out. First of all, it comes out when it comes out. People sit there and, and their fingers twitch as they try to think, how can I break off a piece of bacon without anybody noticing? That's mm-hmm. one. Number two, it makes, we were driving one time, one year we were driving with this bacon turkey in the back of the car and people behind us were saying, were like beeping and flashing lights because they could smell the, the bacon turkey from behind the car, like wafting back. 
and 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 the the other thing about it is it makes is incredible gravy. In other words, all mm. the turkey drinks and all the bacon drippings and whatever other kind of drippings are dripping, you know, and the drugs. Uh, we put all that into the gravy and make this amazing gravy, which goes on top of this bacon turkey. And when this thing hits the table, and we say our amens, and people just die for it. There's there's, there's this like feeding frenzy and there's nothing but like bones left it's like it's picked to the bone so I make that I last several years and i enjoy making that i also enjoy baking like i'll bake a pie once in a while or something like that so i and, and yeah. it's it's nice to see people eat it and you do too i mean you, you're a great cook well it is fun uh the bacon turkey has been has been a demand ever since you started it yeah it's, it's uh now they won't let me do it. I mean, they, they, they you're, bring, you, you're bringing the bacon turkey, aren't you? <laughs> aren't you? It's a yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes. yes. No, no, there's no no deviation now. I, I can't escape the, the, the yeah. curse of the bacon turkey. No, it's it's quite delicious, and it's it's a lot of fun to see. And uh, what we figured out was we will actually um, cook up a pound or so of bacon, just bacon, and bring it so that when... When the bird comes out, they people can just reach for pieces of bacon without touching the bacon on the turkey. <laughs> right. I mean, it, I think there's four or five pounds of bacon altogether. I mean, it's ridiculous. It depends on the size of the bird. Right. Well, we just put four or five pounds of bacon regardless of the size of the bird. <laughs> Sometimes it's like the size of a Cornish hen, and we just put four or five pounds of bacon on <laughs> Great. We, Actually, <laughs> I was thinking we should do a... Uh, uh, turkey breast along with the turkey. Mm. I think we just mold the turkey out of bacon. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> That'd be spectacular. One year I stuffed it with I put I put a pork loin inside the bur- inside the per- the cavity, you know, I stuffed this turkey and it it was a little over the top. But people liked it. it came out very moist. Yeah. And this is this is not a cooking show. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to get back to topic here. Okay, okay. <laughs> but the, I was going to say the, the the drippings make a lovely gravy. They do. And it's wonderful on all the the kids. I, I, this is where I'm laughing because all the children that happen to be there in the family, they will eat the vegetables as long as this stuff is, is slathered on top. Right. I mean, Very well, funny. It is funny. Well, uh, but... Um, and so, but but those those moments, you see, what we just did right now, reminiscing over this bacon turkey and over, and there are many, many, many others. These are the moments that you can t- you you tie yourselves together with these people you call your relatives who may or may not be. Uh, but th- this these bonds of communi- communi- com- communality of 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 congeniality of friendship and of and of just it's. it's- a place where we all agree mm. for that instant we all agree that the bacon turkey and the gravy and the veggies is wonderful and we all eat and we're all happy it's just an amazing thing right. to get such a diverse group of people together in agreement and, and there's a, there's the shared experiences um, there's there's, you know, there's these traditions which everyone has in their family, one tradition or another, you know, whether you bring, whether it's handgun uh, uh, night or whatever it is, the traditions that, um, we don't do handgun night anymore because of the incident, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, whatever the tradition is, um, you know, they, they, they morph and change, but they, they carry on uh, through time and you see the children are exposed to them and then, you know, uh, like <clears throat> every year someone usually someone different will will host Thanksgiving and we, we kind of pass it around the family and somebody will host it for a few years and then it'll go on to someone else. And, and these, um, as you mentioned, these are times to, me- to remember those who, those who aren't, who are no longer with us, either uh, uh, relatives who have passed on, you know, we, we often will gather and, and remember these people who we still hold in our hearts. We we always talk on the soul of the Airman about relationships. And once you have a relationship, it passes the bonds of time. <clears throat> it passes the bonds of your of your physical existence here on Earth. <clears throat> but yet, 
at these moments, we all have our remembrances of this person. This this person who's no longer there affected each one of us in a different way. But we can all remember them and talk a little bit about them and bring them back to life or bring them back to the present uh, thought and memory and and share that, that common bond. Mm-hmm. Just the sharing. People are alive in your memory and in your heart. And that's how you, you honor them, is by going through all of this. Right. I mean, your, your dad, the things your dad would make for Thanksgiving, I remember to this day, and we talk about them to this day. Uh, he was a wonderful chef. Um, he always had a variety of dishes which would range from everything which was fairly like mashed potatoes, kind of very recognizable things, to some fairly exotic and more uh, oriental or Philippine type dishes. But he would put them all out for Thanksgiving. There would be a tremendous spread, you know. Oh, and it had to do with he, food. And he loved to watch people eat them and comment on them. Remember his, his great thing is, you know, it's okay. If if you were if you had made the best thing you'd ever made in your life, the praise from Amato was mm, it's okay, because that was that was like top. Mm. <laughs> you know, he would, would he would eat it and taste it a little bit, smack his lips a little bit, and come, mm, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, that was and that was like wow, it was a rave from anybody else, because he was a chef and and amongst the chefs it was this kind of. Uh, you know, you didn't you didn't uh, call attention to your food that way. You just you just said, yeah, oh yeah, that's good, good good job. You know, it's just mm-hmm. a, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and he he would make out these amazing spreads. Uh, and we had lots of great Thanksgivings. You know, in Jersey City, going there for you know, you spent half the day um, at you know Madison or wherever my mom's house, and then half the day. You know, uh, in in Jersey City and have these wonderful Thanksgiving feasts and you know it's something that we remember even now. Yeah, and the kids remember. Yeah, and just this was the madness that we went through. The madness. Part of getting together with family is the madness. <laughs> <laughs> just you know, there were things going on. There was as always. Remember the one year where we almost didn't have Thanksgiving. Was it the uh, apocalypse? What was it? <laughs> I don't uh, remember. They were, the boys were acting oh, up. That year, oh mm-hmm. my God. Yes, we, we threatened to turn around and go home and not have Thanksgiving. Oh, the wailing. <laughs> yeah, they were young and they were being... They were being bad. <laughs> and it was that was it. We said, all right, well... We're going to turn this car around, and we did. <laughs> yeah, well, that was the only reason we turned it around is because Christopher was a little crazed. <laughs> Just a little bit. Um, but, but you see, those you know, what we're doing right now is exactly the same sort of thing that we do when we gather with, with these people that we, uh, some that we miss and some that we don't, uh, that we... Um, we remember and reconnect. Uh, part of that reminiscing is is bringing a memory to the present, and then finding new things about that memory, or or new remembrances of a person who's no longer there. You know the, um, you know you're reconnecting with family about their present business, but you're also reconnecting with the past and and thinking about uh, why or how these people mean what, what these people mean to you why why they're important to you what why the relationship or are extending the fingers of the relationship into a new part of their lives or their you know you know you see the changes in in people over the last year or over the last several years um so it's it's building the bonds uh and and exercising the relationship in a broader sense um knowing where you're where you are now in your life part of that is in relationship to where your family is and where you are in your family you know you're you were a child you you were a young adult now you're you're a senior member of the family maybe those remembering those who you who you knew and who have passed on now now i think uh, the kids what i remember them telling me is hey 
we sit at the big table now. Oh, yes, we've graduated to the adult table. <laughs> we can take the drinks out from under our seats and drink them now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and just it, just watching all of that unfold is, is amazing because when they're, they're little, you know, they have to sit with mom and dad, but their sibs are on the other end all playing games or whatnot at the end of the, the kid table, and they want to be there. Then yeah. when they get over there and they get older, like, hey, why do I have to sit here? <laughs> exactly. I mean, there's, there's, this is some of the, of the, of the things to be thankful for. Um, you know, these, <clears throat> not all the memories are, are wonderful, but when we get together, <clears throat> we, we talk about our relationship to those memories. You know, uh, we talk about folks who have passed on and what we still think about them, what we feel about them. And, and I, I've noticed uh, that over the years, as, as uh, Christopher's cousins have grown older, their remembrances of him and their relationship to those remembrances has changed because they've gotten older. And now they understand a little bit more about what it was that 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 he went through and what you know what their new relationship to it is. So 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 that the remembrance gives them gives them a point to voice it. You can say, well, you know, we're talking about talking about somebody who's no longer here, and they say, you know, I always X Y Z about Christopher, and I never knew how to say it back then, but right. now I do. You know. Yeah, there's stages. They, 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 that, that affirmation of a change in the way that they understood something then versus how they understand it now is is a is a maturation process. It's it's a new. It, 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 in remembering, it isn't just a static thing. It's a dynamic thing. Mhm. And it's part of the, at least for a close family, it's part of a grieving process. Mhm. Something that you constantly adjust, right? And you and you you assimilate it. You know, um, my dad, who's passed on now for over twenty years, uh, the relationship he had with some of my younger cousins, they they've come to us and to me and said, you know, he was like he was like another father to me. He was I miss him so much, and I now I understand why I do, or or more why I do, and those types of of discussions don't happen at any other time during the year, whether it's because you're separated or just it's the 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 um, environment of that Thanksgiving meal allows people to to both reconnect, remember, and then reprocess those memories, and then have somebody you can actually share them with because you can't just bring these up, you know, in the middle of a bus station. People will look at you, and say, okay, but in that in that environment. You can say, "Oh yeah, I remember that too," and I remember what you're talking about. And we can have a a deepening or a broadening or a, a changing of the relationship to a memory that we both have from different perspectives. It's like a, mm-hmm. a mini a mini life review. In fact, it feels like a lifetime sometimes. You know, being in that Thanksgiving meal, it's like, "Oh my God, this is taking forever." Uh, but but it is like a mini life review. Yeah. It is. And you look at things um, from a couple different perspectives. Yeah. You know, it it just broadens your consciousness. Yeah, what would have happened if... Yeah. And the fact that some other member of the family actually had the same thought. Right. Or or you, you, you come to that realization, you know, that they're able to express it now. You know, these people have now matured, and they feel more like your peers versus the. There was a great disparity when they were like, you know, five or seven or something, and now they're twenty-five or or thirty-two or whatever it is. And but they have the memory, and it, it's re-triggered, it's re-evoked by the by this proximity of all of us in the same and familiar environment, and then they could talk about it again. Mm-hmm. It's very good from that point of view well it's life you're exposed to the fullness that life is other people have had experiences that 
and haven't touched you the same way. You know, you're, it all depends on whether or not the person themselves is is willing to explore that. Some don't. They're not capable of, of going there just yet. I think it's tr- in some ways something that we miss here in modern society, but sort of tribal in in the sense that we're sharing <clears throat> with, a, with an extended bunch of people who are connected to us, but not intimately connected. They're, they're, they're part of our tribe, you know, our family, our tribe. It's not an everyday connection. It's, right. There is a, um, some type of relationship, but it, and, and a continued relationship. Exactly. That's the, the interesting thing. It's through decades even. So, and you see how that all changed, and you realize that this person has changed, and you yourself have changed. When, right, you, the, when you think, when you think back to the way it was twenty years ago, and where you are right now. Yeah. There's, there's a, you know, there's that tapestry we weave amongst the tribe of people, of memory, of experience, of changing roles and positions in the family, and and you 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 color those threads and you bind them together and you see what that tapestry is woven when you come back together you know you know you don't know what everyone's done but you can see the changes in them and you can see that they're different now and that you know they fit in a different place or they or hopefully that they're different sometimes you get people who are exactly the same they haven't changed at all and that's part of their charm damn it <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and, and but that in its, in and of itself is just an, another type of reconnect. Um, some people don't, or they change at much slower rates, or um, you know, or their medication's too high, or whatever. But it, but it's it, it is still a um, you know a, a sharing of of relationship, and and there are always changes because one thing that we always say on the soul of every man, and and it's that's a truism is that there is nothing in life but change. Uh, and, and you can do everything that you possibly want to do to try and stop change, but it never can be stopped. You can only lie to yourself about it. Well, as you can see when someone has reached a level where they're actually embracing the idea that they are changing. Mm. Because there, there are those, there are cousins that, no matter how hard they try, they just they can't extend their world past themselves. And you kind of you sigh and you say, okay, that's them, and that's as much as we're going to be able to uh, to do right now. Right, but there's always a right now, and there's always a there'll be another moment, and we'll see. Another moment. Yeah, in other words, the relationship continues. And even though some may change very rapid, some relationships among the family may change very rapidly and some may change seemingly not at all forever, um, there is always this, you know, as we said before, all of us bring ourselves back together, whomever is present, and we, we reaffirm the things that have changed, we, we, we understand more about what where we all are. We we see that we change that we we move, you know, our our individual existence and the relationships that that uh we have with these with this tribe, with this bunch of people that we're related to, um change us. You know, we we act a little differently when we're with these people because they know us and they don't know us. They, they know a lot about us, but there's always something that you can you can find out that's even new that you didn't know about someone that you've known really your whole life, uh, because we are, um, you know, we all have our separate journeys, but yet we bring them back together and we we share. It's I think it's very important, you know, um, and that we shouldn't push ourselves past it and move on to the next thing, and just treat it like we said before, like a speed bump. Uh, it's um, 
we do that to our own detriment if we if we ignore this or make it into some sort of a of a second class type of holiday something that we just have to get through well it's it depends on the person some people just you know okay i'm here <laughs> yeah but that's them but that's what i mean you can't it, it's again seeing where they are and they'll share as much as they're going to yes yes and and um and we have to be thankful for that i mean that's where i started this with this rant about thanksgiving and and i think the 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 upset of thanksgiving is because it's not being given um a place or it seems that its place is being sort of uh under attack but if if we look at it from the point of view of what it's supposed to be and try to hold that you know try to try to preserve it i think we'll find that others want to preserve it as well and they want it to be uh an important sort of gathering you know otherwise we only see these folks at at, at weddings and funerals i mean this is one of those non-wedding, non-funeral funeral gatherings that we we have too few of, really. Um, and it, it should be made a special, uh, or at least a um, a significant time. It reminds me of a. a there's a phrase. Um, the greatest gift that you can give someone is to say thank you for being in my life. Mm. Thank you for being in my life. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter if it's a, a good or a bad influence. That's the, that's the difference. Good. It's been good. <laughs> <laughs> it has been good. And thank you for being in my life. Mm. Yes, thank you for being in my life. <laughs> and have we reached the end of our hour? Is that where we're at right now? Um, we should give thanks for that. Uh, we're close. Uh, anyway, so um, just to wrap it all up, uh, Thanksgiving is, is more than just something that we should um, endure. I think we, we do have to kind of, whatever this moment is, let's say it's this day, set aside that time and, and be thankful for the people in our lives and gather together and, and see where they are, weave that tapestry together. So I'm, I am thankful for it, and I hopefully that, that we will get through it and, and, uh, and be better for it at the, end of, of, at, at the end of it. Yes. No. And we are quite thankful to be able to say thank you for listening. Yep. This is the soul of every man. I'm Michael. And I'm Margaret.